Everything we understand about life comes from one tiny subset, life on Earth. The truth is that we don't truly understand how life first developed from inorganic materials billions of years ago, and who's to say that different processes couldn't have occurred on various planets around the universe. Perhaps there are more issues to research and options to think about. But first, let's talk about some of the earliest known living organisms on Earth. You're watching s and &S. This is Origin of Life on Earth. Blue-green algae, often known as cyanobacteria, have been around since very early times on Earth. In Western Australia, rocks with an estimated age of 3,500 million years have the potential to contain fossil specimens. Cyanobacteria, despite frequently called blue-green algae, are not actually algae. They are prokaryotic in nature. Prokaryotic living forms include bacteria in general and cyanobacteria in particular. This simply means that their cells lack specific organelles and nuclei and that their genetic material is incorporated throughout the entire cell. All other living forms on Earth, even true algae, are made up of eukaryotic cells with organelles and genetic material that is confined in a single location, and this property is unique to bacteria and archaea. Archaea and bacteria are tough organisms. Most eukaryotes would die in conditions that are hot, cold, salty, acidic, and alkaline, but they survive them. Despite this, they have a bad reputation because, after all, bacteria are the root of many human diseases. We might not even exist if it weren't for them. The earliest living forms were prokaryotes, which were uncomplicated organisms that subsisted on carbon molecules that were building up in the early oceans of Earth. Other organisms gradually developed the ability to produce their own energy by utilizing the sun's energy as well as substances like sulfides. Then, cyanobacteria advanced, they began to use water during photosynthesis, producing oxygen as a byproduct. The Earth's atmosphere eventually contained enough oxygen to support the evolution of species that can use it as a source of energy. However, humans may owe bacteria more than just the air we breathe. Eukaryotic cells, which make up human beings, most likely developed from bacteria some two billion years ago. According to an idea, two independent prokaryotic bacteria formed a symbiotic connection that led to the evolution of eukaryotic cells. When one bacteria was swallowed by another, the smaller cell persisted inside the larger one for the benefit of both. They developed into the more complex eukaryotic cell with its nucleus wrapped in a membrane. Whatever the circumstances, the development of eukaryotic cells constituted a critical turning point in the evolution of life on Earth. As environmental circumstances improved, more complex organisms started to evolve. The Pilbara area of Western Australia contained some of the earliest traces of life on Earth, including the 3.49 billion-year-old fossilized remains of microbial mat formations that resemble wrinkle lines in rocks. Stromatolite fossilized remains are also located in the Pilbara region. Microbes that still exist today and dwell in shallow sea habitats form these mat-like structures. Sand builds up on top of the microbial mats, and as the microorganisms travel upward in search of light, they create characteristic layers with a bulbous appearance that eventually turn into rocks. We believe that life is most likely to be hiding somewhere where there is water and a heat source to warm the water as we search the universe for life beyond our home planet. Heat and water seem to be the most likely needs for producing an environment that can support some kind of life, at least, the kinds of life forms similar to those we find on Earth. Although we are aware that some living creatures flourish in more extreme conditions. But who knows what other kinds of living things might exist? So, that's all about this video. I'll meet you in another interesting topic. Until then, signing off. This is SNS.